On April 24th, it gained 1,486 new followers. On April 25th, it gained 1,214 followers. Going back, I was pretty consistently gaining 1,000 to 2,000 a day. Twitter accepts Elon Musk's offer to purchase them. The next day, April 26th, Mr. Chairman, I would ask you, how, how many new followers do you think I gained the next day? More than 1,000. You would be correct. The next day, I gained 51,405. The next day, April 27th, I gained 61,261. The next day, April 28th, I gained 70,584. In the week and a half since Elon Musk purchased Twitter, my Twitter followers went from 4.8 million to 5.1 million. Conservatives all across the country have reported numbers like that, have put up numbers like that, and it is obvious. Someone flipped a switch. The governors they had on that said silence conservatives were flipped off. That, that is the only rational explanation from going from 1,000 to 70,000 the day after he bought it. And I'll just point out, he hasn't even taken it over yet. This is just the interorum effect of some engineers who I imagine are running the document shredders like crazy, going, oh, crap, they're going to find out what we're doing. Turn the stuff off. That activity illustrates the need for transparency profoundly, and I hope Congress does something about it. The single biggest threat to free speech in this country, in my judgment, is the power of big tech. A handful of Silicon Valley billionaires who have arrogated to themselves complete monopoly power over the public discourse. Professor Keller just referred to these social media sites as the public square, and that is very accurate. It is how we speak with each other. And big tech has gotten more and more brazen in its abuse of that power. This is a hearing on transparency for big tech. I would be in support of almost anything imaginable to increase transparency for big tech. What's the bill being discussed here is a fairly modest step that gives access to some academic researchers. I suppose that would be fine. It's not clear to me why a professor at Harvard or Stanford should have some special access that, that Joe Q citizen should not. When it comes to transparency, the people have a right to know. But to the extent academic research marginally increases the ability of the people to know what's going on, I imagine that's a positive step. The lack of transparency is not an accident. It is a deliberate feature of how big tech has set up its system. To all the witnesses here today, in the 2016 elections, does anyone know how many posts from Republican candidates for office were blocked? Does anyone know how many posts from Democrat candidates for office were blocked? How about the 2018 election, 2020 election? Does anyone know the average ad rate charged by Google or by Facebook to Democratic candidates for office? Does anyone know the average ad rate charged by Google or Facebook for Republican candidates for office? Nobody knows. I don't know. The chairman doesn't know. And I'll tell you, Mark Zuckerberg has sat at that table. I've asked him that question. I've asked the CEO of Google those questions. I've asked them those questions in writing. And they hire teams of lawyers to write letters back that say, in every way possible, pound sand, we refuse to tell you. But by the way, trust us, we're not censoring. We're just not going to tell you. During the Trump administration, I begged the Department of Justice, if they did nothing else on big tech censorship, to use the subpoena authority of DOJ to get answers to basic questions on transparency. I think there were multiple people in the administration who wanted to do that, but they did not get that accomplished. Few things illustrate the abuse of power of big tech over free speech better than the reaction in the last two weeks to Elon Musk announcing that he's buying Twitter. I find it quite remarkable. I think Elon Musk's buying Twitter is, without exaggeration, the most significant development in favor of free speech in decades. I also find it astonishing the reaction of much of the corporate media and the left to Elon Musk buying Twitter and, oh my God, suddenly conservatives being allowed to speak. And it is truly Armageddon. It's cats and dogs living for, together. It is the worst imaginable watching the public histrionics of the left if their opponents are not silenced, is amazing. And by the way, Elon Musk, the last time checked, is not some right-wing character. He's a lifelong Democrat who voted for Barack Obama twice. And this is the scary specter 
because he's dared stand up and say, you know, we'll allow free speech and we'll allow speech I disagree with. Look, I'll give you one data point. I asked how many were, were blocked. Nobody knew. I could ask how many were shadow banned. No one would know because they don't tell you. But I'll give you one data point from my own Twitter page. I'm active on Twitter, spent a lot of time on social media. Twitter accepted Elon Musk's offer to purchase on April 25th. All right, on April 22nd, my Twitter account gained 1,488 new followers. On April 23rd, it gained 1,526 new followers. On April 24th, it gained 1,486 new followers. On April 25th, it gained 1,214 followers. Going back, I was pretty consistently gaining 1,000 to 2,000 a day. Twitter accepts Elon Musk's offer to purchase them. The next day, April 26th, Mr. Chairman, I would ask you, how how many new followers do you think I gained the next day? More than 1,000. You would be correct. The next day, I gained 51,405. The next day, April 27th, I gained 61,261. The next day, April 28th, I gained 70,584. In the week and a half since Elon Musk purchased Twitter, my Twitter followers went from 4.8 million to 5.1 million. Conservatives all across the country have reported numbers like that, have put up numbers like that, and it is obvious someone flipped a switch. 